Hi everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Dave Thomas, also known as Subtrap9, and today is going to be another episode of the Language Essentials series. Again, this is going to be in F sharp, but first I'm just going to go for a quick run. I will see you when I get back. So I'm back from my run, I've got a cup of tea here, and now we can start with the language essentials. Today we're going to be covering active patterns. I'll just put this tea on the floor. So active patterns, what are they? Well, active patterns allow you to parameterize input data or types or primitives into patterns which can be used inside pattern matching. That is probably the best way that I can describe them. They come in four different varieties. The first type is the single case active pattern. You can think of these more as a converter. The syntax to define single case active patterns is the banana clip syntax. As you can see, it's an open bracket followed by a pipe, the single case name, then a pipe and the closing bracket. After this, you provide the, the parameter you, you want to match on and then an expression. So now let's send this to interactive. You can see there it's a function that takes a string and returns a string, so it's a, it's a simple converter. So now let's match this with a, um, a simple string and send this to interactive to see the result. So you can see there that it simply matches the uppercase expression and prints out the uppercase text. This is exactly the same as writing a guard like this. What we can also do is just match the whole text without actually doing any constraints and print that straight out, which would act as a simple converter. So you can see there it's acting as a simple converter. Another thing that we can do is we can use the single case active pattern in a function signature. So if we use the active pattern here, the upper identifier is available inside the function for use after it's been converted to uppercase. So if we then send this through interactive, we will convert the lowercase lower into uppercase. Another thing you can do is you can use a single case active pattern like a method by enclosing it inside uh, parentheses and pipes. So if you do this here and write little expression to use this method, you'll find it works exactly the same as before. And finally, you can also use them inside let binding so you can get access to the converted objects. So now another couple of examples of how these can be used. In this example, I'm going to wrap lazy so that when it's used inside a pattern match, the value of the lazy is evaluated. So you can see there that the value is not created. If we now try and use the lazy active pattern, we should find that the value is evaluated. For the last example, we'll create a quick record type with several different properties, then we'll create an active pattern which basically extracts the first property. Now what we'll do is we'll put a few of these into a list and then we will try and map the list by our active pattern. So we can use the match syntax to match the pattern and then we can also shorten this again using the function syntax but then this can be shortened right down again by wrapping the single case active pattern with parentheses. The second type of active pattern is the multi-case active pattern. These are useful for, for when you want to decompose your input data or types into a known number of partitions. The limitation is with these is the number of partitions can only be a maximum of seven. Multi-case patterns are described much the same except there's a pipe between each different case within them and as I said before there's only a maximum of seven different types. When we send this to interactive you'll notice that the type returned is a choice describing the type of each case. So now we'll match the number three with odd which will print odd on the screen and then we'll match even which will print even on the screen. 
So what we're going to do now is split a string into three different partitions, a sentence, a word and white space. We'll do this by first of all trimming the, the imports and matching a, an empty string into white space and then when the input contains any space we'll split that using the string splitter and then we'll also put everything else into a word. You can see there I forgot to open the system namespace. So now we can match a simple string but that has a space in and we can match against the white space pattern printing white space word to print word on screen and also to match sentence printing the, the sentence on the screen. So you can see there that we've got word sentence with two components hello and everyone. So another type is the partial active pattern and this type is used when you may not always get a match for the type of pattern that you're looking for. So the syntax for partial active patterns is using the underscore operator between the two pipe operators. This is to indicate that the pattern may or may not return a match. Here we're going to match a list so that if the list is empty, the, the pattern won't actually return anything. So it'll return the non option. If it's not empty, we first reverse the list and then we return as two separate elements, the last element in the list, which is the head of the reversed list, and then the rest of the list. And because this is a partial pattern, we return that inside the sum element. So now we can create a range of numbers between one and 10. We can match those numbers using our active pattern and we can print that to FSI. You can see here we've got our list of numbers and our last element in the list. So in the next example, we're first going to declare a function which detects when we're within a range of numbers. Now I'm going to define a start and end range, which we're going to use with the between function. So now I'm going to declare an active pattern called ROM, which is going to use the between function using the start and end range as we just defined. So now this allows us to write another function where we can simulate writing to memory, passing in a location and some data, and we can use the ROM active pattern to actually stop us from writing to an area that not, we're not supposed to. So now we can use that function to try and write to the ROM area, which should result in a message saying that we can't write to the area. So there you can see that this isn't allowing us access to the ROM area. Now let's try to change the address to one that we can write to. So you can see there we can now write to the memory area. Partial active patterns are really good for collapsing complex if-else blocks into simple pattern matches. For a final example, we'll create a, a partial active pattern which uses some elements of quotations. Quotations themselves are comprised of active patterns. Here we've got one called call, but we're going to split that ourselves to extract our own instance method active pattern. The instance field you can see inside the call active pattern is an option. So here we're simply just mapping it. Now we can create a number and a little match expression so that we can try and match an instance call using the active pattern we've just declared. To test this, we're just going to print out whether this is an instance or it isn't. Now we'll just send these over to interactive and, and try this out. Right, you can see there that that's an instance method. So now if we go back and change this so that it's a, a static method using int32 equals instead. Now you can see that that's not an instance method. So you can kind of use active patterns to simplify other existing active patterns too. The, the last type of active pattern, which isn't really a type, it's actually any active pattern can be parameterized. Only the last parameter is used in the active pattern syntax. But before that last parameter, any other parameters before that would make that active pattern be classed as a parameterized active pattern. To define parameterized active patterns, you simply declare any extra parameters before the input value. In this active pattern, we only actually return sum when the input value contains the pattern that was passed in. To provide the input parameters to the active pattern, you simply provide them after the active patterns name. This allows parameterized active patterns to be very flexible. So now you can see this output via interactive. 
For the last little demo, we can actually rewrite the earlier ROM active pattern to use this syntax. Uh, we can create a pattern called memory between passing in the start and end address. So we can actually create a very flexible pattern using this syntax. So now we can test that in Interactive 2. If you got this far, why not consider subscribing to the channel? You can get future updates whenever a new video comes out. As usual, smash the like button if you like this video. Um, drop any comments if you have anything to say at all. And I will see you next time.